Hello everyone and welcome for another video of Love and War Games. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Independence Battlefleet set for the Union, which has been released in this month of August 2023. And this box does need its own what to build video because there are a ton of things to, to build. Basically, this is almost going to be an Orbat review for the Union because in this single box that is not that expensive, you have basically every single proof uh, ever for the Union except the latest, latest aerial sprues that have just been released, but you have everything surface and submerged wise uh, for the Union that is available. So let's have a look at what you get in the box, how you can build them, how to play each of the different variants. So this is probably going to be quite a long video, uh, but you can always keep um, to the time that you want because I'm going to put the timestamp for each of them. And uh, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting because this Independence Battlefleet set is really, really a good box. Before we start, let's uh, remind everyone about how the Union plays, actually. So they are basically the Americans, let's say, very uh, expansionist, very aggressive. So they are, of course, a very alternate history uh, universe uh, Americans, because we know Americans are not like that in the real life. And uh, so they start to conquer Mexico, South America, they even start to attack Canada. And um, they are very good for beginners, uh, those uh, Americans, because uh, first of all, they have battle wheels, which means that uh, if they really need to, they can become very maneuverable. And they can also, they usually have all their guns pointing forward. There are some exceptions, but most of their ships are like this, which means they are very, very easy to drive this ship, to pilot them. And uh, yeah, it makes them very good for the um, beginners, especially since they don't have many, many special rules. Uh, their ships are good for what they do. They have good stat lines uh, for their point cost. And they can use their default weapons very well. They can give uh, extreme range to basically all their rocket weapons, which is very interesting. And especially their gunnery weapons and their fusillade weapons, which include, for example, broadsides, are really good because they can always get give them hell, which means that uh, these weapons gain devastating. Uh, of course, this will cause some disorder, but it really means that every single Union ship can really punch above its weight class uh, because devastating can really start to pile up very very fast sometimes it will do nothing but sometimes like if you've seen our battle report you have seen a basic support ship got a little bit lucky with give them hell and basically sink down a battle cruiser because uh, yeah th this rule is very strong uh, also they have only one uh, like faction. Yes, they start to have mercenaries with their aerial, but you can play them as default union, but they don't have sub-faction. Uh, they do have experimental ships for Tesla, which are their own type of Pipeworks uh, experimental ships, but apart from that, there is nothing very funky. So if you want, if you don't like the idea of having to buy different na nations to have the entire orbit, you can go with the union because you will have everything for a single nation. And as you can see, there are so many things. Yeah, I can barely fit everything that you get there. Um, so for 66 euros, you have basically a little bit of everything. You have the flagship in resin, which is the Independence, the main version. You have one uh, frontline cruiser, one support cruiser, one Orwa cruiser, and one uh, Colossus, which is Mass 2. You also have this uh, Firepoint um, platform that is also Mass 2. Then you get lots of Mass 1. Two frigates, uh, one destroyer, two corvettes, uh, two acrons, one submarines, uh, two uh, patriot automatas. You have two escort tokens. Uh, you have two um, talent to uh, tokens, one SRS tokens, and I think I didn't forget anything. But as you can see, you really have a ton of things. They are all different, and as you can see, we're gonna take a look at each and every uh, different variant. So if you're here at this point of the video, you see that it's probably quite long, and that is why. But remember to use the timestamp uh, to really go to the part that you want. Or if you're a new Union player, you can just listen to everything and see how the entire Union plays. And we will start with the Independence Battle Cruiser, which is the default variant of the resin ship that you get. First of all, I have to say I really like the appearance of this. Uh, it's much more, I don't know, modern or sci-fi looking than the other uh, Union battleships, like the Constitution on the Mexico that we've seen already. Uh, this looks more modern. And I really, really like it, like appearance-wise. Might be my favorite Union flagship of the entire game. And the, um, maybe it's the America, but it's just another variant. I do. But anyway, I just like it very much. But how does it play on the table? First of all, it's cheap. 
it's 218 points which is good for a flagship uh, but it is more as it says a battle cruiser than a battleship you can see it from the armor 7 armor seven, uh, 14 citadel is not crazy and it has only seven hull points uh, in battle ready and three in crippled which means 10 hull points in total uh, this thing can get sunk fast don't expect it to survive too long it has a shield generator though so that helps quite a, quite a bit and a magnetic generator which is really good if the enemy uh, tries to counter you with some uh, air attack and some SRS and stuff uh, what does it do offensive wise it has uh, quite a few uh, weapons it has two heavy gun batteries one to the front one to the rear and two small uh, gun batteries uh, both of them pointing to the front it has heavy, uh, sorry, it has a torpedo salvo, which is meh, um, quite easy to pilot because most of the firepower is forward uh, facing, but then when you get at your uh, good range, you can use your paddle wheel to just turn very hard and combine your firepower with the heavy gun battery that is in the rear. Uh, this thing is quite fragile so i'm not sure how to play it i think it you can play it not as you would a constitution or something that really wants to be in the center and tank the enemy but you can really play it as a kind of like a big cruiser let's say uh like it can just um sail around next to a squadron of yorktown for example of your basic cruisers and it's just gonna combine its firepower and protect them with its magnetic generator and just be a good ship uh, do uh, note that it has heavy firepower and you can combined of course with the rear heavy gun battery but you can also use heavy firepower with the three gun batteries to the front uh, if you do uh, activate heavy firepower and you also use give them hell uh, that is going to be one very very powerful attack that you're going to deliver on your enemy apart from that uh, nothing much to say it is a good ship uh, fairly efficient don't expect too much of it but for 200 points ish uh, it is going to do its job well just don't overestimate how well it can tank enemy attacks. Then we go for the Liberty Battle Carrier. I just love this design so much, it looks so good. I'm not sure I will play it much because unfortunately I also have an Enterprise uh, like fleet carrier which is more expensive but brings you so much more. This battle carrier is uh, quite solid still. It does have a shield generator which is interesting, very interesting for an aircraft carrier at this point range. It does have torpedo salvo, but we don't care. Too heavy rocket battery, but don't count on it too much. Uh, you don't want this guy to expose, but if you get attacked, especially by air, uh, uh, aerial units that can see you through our islands, this can allow you to punch back a little bit. SRS capacity of 6 only is a little bit underwhelming, um, and makes me want to say that it wants to use its heavy rocket batteries as well but as soon as it shows itself it might get uh, sunk very fast only five um, hull points before you get crippled is very annoying however however you keep um, SRS capacity of four while you are crippled which is actually not bad it's not divided by two you only uh, lose like 30% uh, of your firepower this is a uh, random math I'm not it's not 30% but you don't lose that much uh, in uh, terms of SRS capacity SRS capacity of four is still the equivalent of a strike uh, like support carrier so it's quite fine give them hell is a little bit sad on a ship that has uh, rocket batteries However, what you can do, and what I would do if I really wanted to play a Liberty Bell carrier, would be to give it an Akron uh, aerial unit to give extreme range to the two uh, heavy rocket batteries. And then you can really put it far away from the opponent, but maybe with open line of sight. And then you can use its torpedoes and its heavy rocket batteries and its SRS tokens uh, from turn one. And the enemy will really need to get close to you to be in range uh, for his weapons so and uh, you can really do a lot of damage with this if you do this configuration i would recommend having an escort uh, sh um, ship uh, attached to you uh, either the springfield that we will see later or which are good but also especially the california uh, which will uh, first of all it will repair you if you get uh, panicked and you cannot send uh, aircraft anymore it will really help and it also boosts your defense as well uh, because if you are in the open seas, uh, your big threat will be the torpedoes. SDV-5 is fine, but if you can boost it to S SDV, I don't know, uh, 7, I think, or 8 with the California, because it has heavy escort, uh, then we are talking about a lot more uh, resilience for you. 
do note as well that it has uh, the same armor 7 and citadel 14 um, which was very underwhelming for the independence but for an aircraft carrier i would say it's fine it's fine it doesn't mean it's not supposed to be in the center uh, tanking the enemy uh, firepower so 714 for an aircraft carrier is really fine and then the version that i will probably play for myself is the america special operations vessel first of all this ship looks extremely cool it's basically an independence but you replace the rear heavy gun battery with uh, this uh, little um, talon helicopter let's say but what does the america do basically it's an independence in the sense that it has heavy firepower forward facing weaponry uh, torpedo salvos everything that we've said but it has two main differences first of all the most obvious one is that it doesn't have the rear weapon so it's easier to pilot and it can send uh, these uh, little uh, boarding air aircrafts uh, within 20 inches so quite a short range but if it does that it's what is called a pacifier assault and it's going to be a 15 dice boarding uh, action which is enough to threaten basically every single ship in the game uh, yes you may run out of luck but even if the boarding fails spectacularly you will not get a counter boarding because it's not really a boarding action where you're next to the enemy it's like a boarding action through uh, these uh, aircraft so you're quite safe and uh, if you, it does succeed, like it means that the um, independence just highly boosted its firepower because on top of all the weaponry, you also make a very powerful boarding action turn after turn after turn. Um, however, the big weakness of the America compared to the independence, apart from its price being a little bit higher, is its uh, battle ready and crippled profile. It gets crippled just as the Liberty after only five hull points something that is a little bit sad and it makes it quite weaker and I'm like ah oh, if only if only uh, but the big thing that it has for itself is the point defense shield generator which first of all is a very cool name I don't know how it works but it, I love this it reminds me of Supreme Commander and its point defense shields uh, but apart from that what does it mean it means that it, the America is the only ship in the entire game that can combine a shield generator and a shroud generator, which it also has, and it doesn't have a magnetic anymore. That is huge, that is absolutely huge, and uh, the entire point of not having, being able to combine shield and shroud anymore was because this combo was too powerful, and some ships were just invincible with it. Well, the America is fragile, Armor 7, Citadel 14 is eh for a ship that wants to be quite close to the center of the map, but and only has five all points but it means that um, your opponent will really really need to dedicate heavy firepower to deal with this however however be very careful because without the magnetic generator and um, it, it means that you will be very vulnerable to two types of weapons first of all torpedoes which don't care in any way about either shield either shroud so torpedoes are really going to be your big threat and you're also uh, very vulnerable to uh, SRS tokens, like all the aircraft attacks. And uh, with ADV-7, which is fine, it, without magnetic, you're not going to go very far with this. Uh, with the torpedoes, you can boost your defense a little bit by using your tactical cavitation, which will make it so you are considered uh, shrouded, like obscured for torpedoes. Always very good. And uh, but it means you cannot use your... Um, like contra rotation uh, either so you lose a little bit of mobility so be careful with that and uh, against the S uh, SRS tokens you don't have much except what I would highly 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 recommend if you have an America would be to put uh, four Springfield Corvettes which would give you plus five to your ADV going to 12 which is uh, starts to be good and uh, same for the SDV plus five going to 10 and this means that you are much more resilient against torpedoes because if you use tactical cavitation and you have SDV-10, uh, let me tell you that the torpedoes really don't have the same effect on you. And if you get attacked by a lot of uh, aircrafts, well, SDV-12, uh, you, are, you are supposed to shoot down like uh, two or three of those at least before they can attack, which is going to be good. Uh, it's of course really good if you have the America to have uh, a ship with a flag barrage next to you because really their aircrafts uh, are going to be your big fear but even if you don't uh, it's okay it's only 223 points not either a huge investment uh, if you can just hide it on the side of an island uh, and um, so it can shoot its forward facing weaponry and you are quite protected with your shroud and being hidden uh, from the enemy's uh, riposte this is going to be quite good but 
please please don't throw your america in the center because you have a shroud and a shield uh, it is not meant to handle too much firepower for too long because it can get crippled very very fast play it soft your main uh, offensive uh, power with this is going to be the pacifier assault so play it tactically play it like a, indeed a spe spec ops uh, ship quite hidden just attack one ship at a time keep sending your uh, marines left and right all, all the time and this is how you should play the america this is absolutely the ship that i will play first in our next battle report with the union and then we go to a very very interesting ship which is the frontier platform transport this is not a flagship unlike the three previous ships we've talked about and it's very uh, cheap cheap at 183 points for a mass 3 with 10 hull points uh, but this thing uh, has basically no weapon it does have a rear rocket battery which you can replace for a gun battery for example which i actually would recommend but you don't buy this for its heavy broadside or its torpedo salvo not at all you buy it for two things three things actually four things okay it does a lot of uh, um, the basic thing that it does is supply depot very good to give some munitions around especially for the washington's if you do have them next to you on the first turn uh, there are a few things that do enjoy supply depot it's always good to have a source of this also have advanced repair facility 3 which means it can really repair ships left and right and that's really really good uh, advanced repair facility 3 with a ship that is mass 3 means you're going to let launch six dices so statistically you're going to repair uh, whole points every single turn you activate with this uh, either on you or on ships around very good it also has long range support which is really good it boosts the pacifier assaults uh, in range of himself and that is always something that is interesting to consider because that is something that you do want to boost if you can and finally the big thing that you can see is that the frontier does transport a platform uh, the platform usually is about 80 points uh, itself so it means that you get the frontier for 100 points only if you make the discount if you do succeed in dropping it of course and the reserve step of the battle uh, instead of looking if you like if you can come or not you can drop this uh, platform which uh, can be an oklahoma can be a far point can be any type of platform and uh, it's gonna act independently uh, from there so that is a really good ship in the sense that it does a lot of support and it also allow you to bring a platform right in the center of the enemy line you can just go and hide the frontier behind an island then you drop for example the far point that we'll talk about in a second and uh, this far point will start to throw away pacifiers left and right all the time and you will have this very good uh, frontier that is going to be next and it's going to boost the pacifier assault that's going to happen and it's going to uh, repair it and it's going to give it supply depot like just an amazing amazing ship all around um, not sure if it's the most competitive but for the points damn it does a lot and we'll just talk very fast about the farpoint bunker platform which is one of the variants that you can deploy from the frontier and is the one i would highly recommend because it combos very well it's this little thing it has two gun batteries which is not nothing it's eight dices it is relatively resilient with six hollow points but only armor five is quite weak uh, but remember for the gun batteries by the way you have give them hell of course never forget and it has long range support and pacifier assault so it will send some SRS tokens left and right and it will support itself wow that is that is just insane uh, the four point bunker even if you don't buy the frontier it's something to consider just deploy it in the center of the table well hidden behind an island uh, make sure that the gun battery is you pointed at the place uh, where it can attack the enemy if it gets close and then it's just gonna send uh, wave after wave of marines on the opponents probably with long range support and uh, this is mass 2 so it's gonna be 10 dices but rewarding length uh, that is going to be a very very annoying piece of a platform for 70 points like damn uh, probably the union has the only platform that i'm genuinely uh, interested in uh, buying and putting on the table because uh, you don't need line of sight just hide it very well to a place where the opponent cannot have good line of sight without exposing himself and either the opponent uh, ignores it but then it means you're gonna send every turn some pacifier assault with long range support amazing or the enemy will have to expose himself in order to deal with your bunker platform and then for 70 points uh, even if the far point gets destroyed uh, 70 points is not that much at all so either way you win
Okay, now we go into the bread and butter of the Union Force with the frontline cruisers. The Yorktown is the most basic cruiser you can get for the Union in the sense that it has nothing special. It is a very simple two heavy weapons cruiser, the same as you could find in any other fleet. However, however, it has two things that make it very special. The first thing is not so weird, but it has two forward-facing heavy gun batteries, which uh, is quite good, uh, because it means that the ship is very easy to pilot, as we've said. And at 108 points, with two heavy weapons forward-faced and torpedo salvos as well, and broadside, it is, yes, expensive, but it is quite, uh, quite efficient. It has good values of ADV and SDV, and let's remember that it has access to tactical cavitations. Also, if you decide to replace the heavy gun batteries with rockets, then you can buy the unit a single Icron Aerial Escort token for 15 points, and then all your rockets get extreme range. It's maybe less interesting on the Yorktown, but let's always remember that for the Union, when we talk about heavy missile, like a rocket battery, they can very easily get extreme range. But of course, what gives the Yorktown and the uh, upcoming uh, Union cruisers their salt, what makes them very interesting, is that each of them get uh, give them hell, which means that they all of their weapons, broadsides, heavy gun batteries, all of those can get devastating, which boosts their firepower so much. So for 108 points, you get a ship that can deal a ton of damage for its point cost. Uh, this means that most of the Union are more, let's say, a glass cannon than, for example, I don't know, the Russians. Uh, they do cost quite a bit, but they can really punch way above their weight. But also it means that they can pile up their disorder tokens very fast if they keep using give them hell, because their guns get very hot and start to explode and stuff. So they can uh, very much kill something very fast, but they cannot hold too long, especially if you do use them uh, in this fashion. So the Yorktown is very good. You get only one of the frontline ship uh, in this box, and building a Yorktown is always going to be a good idea. Uh, the whole Battlefleet set has only one uh, exemplar of uh, each ship. I will not always tell you, like, okay, you have only one, be careful, Anna. I will talk about them, uh, especially if you plan to build more of those because otherwise it's cheap like if you buy only one uh, it doesn't matter that much if you buy a Yorktown or for example a Lexington of course the Lexington let's talk about it by the way it is much much more expensive than uh, the Yorktown as you can see 135 points it's almost 30 points more expensive it does get as all the heavy cruisers another uh, gun battery but this one is pointed to the rear which means it is harder to pilot but what does it get first of all it has one extra uh, point of armor which is actually a big deal for cruisers uh, really really good to have this extra point of armor it also has much more hull points uh, it goes from um, eight uh, hull points to nine and it has a very good distribution it has six hull points in uh, battle ready and three in crippled so it means it's going to take a lot more time to get this little boy crippled it also has, and this is very interesting, a heavy broadside, which means that if the Lexington gets at point-blank range, this thing is just going to devastate everything between the, all the gun batteries linking together and the heavy broadside, and everybody, of course, is going to get give them hell. So it is much more of a glass cannon, I would say, but it is actually tankier. So it is more expensive, but it is tankier, more hull points. To be fair, to be fair, if you have only one ship that you're going to be able out of this frontline spruce, I might actually recommend you the Lexington. Yet yeah, it, is, it is very expensive, but first of all, it's a very cool ship, as you can see. And uh, it's you really want to hide it a little bit because, yes, it has more hull points, but for the price, you don't want to expose it too fast. But if it gets at closing range, or even better, at point-blank range, for at least its heavy broadside, then you're just going to shoot everywhere. Torpedoes on something far away, heavy broadside on someone that you can have on your side arc because of course you are very maneuverable as all the union and then the two heavy gun batteries plus the small gun batteries can just obliterate something at closing range so a very very good ship that i highly recommend and especially because if you get three lexingtons you can build them as the dead presidents okay this one is worth talking a little bit because uh, there is an alternative build for the dead president and uh, which is the pipe upgrades and it works quite differently so 
what are the dead presidents? It's three cruisers. Uh, the basic variant, which is the non-pipe work version, is the one that you see here, 474 points. It's basically three Lexingtons, and they get a ton of things for the point cost. First of all, they get all of them an internal shield generator. So that's for free, not for free, but everybody gets an internal shield generator, which highly, highly boosts their survivability. They already are quite resilient with armor 7 and 6 hull points each give them also an internal shield generator and that boosts them quite a lot they also ha have veteran repair teams which basically would be a good boost but for them it means they can use um give them help basically with impunity because they're really going to repair well they also have a uh, pack hunter which means they get even more firepower when they're all linked together and they get the hydrophone relay rule which i actually no okay they don't have it and they get shadow hunter this one is huge this one is huge it means that at the beginning of the of the game they can redeploy anywhere so you can put them on the left flank very aggressively and when the enemy tries to counter you can put them all the way on the other flank or in a better position or you can hide them you, it's really a huge uh, capacity and last but certainly not least they get devil own luck which is basically fortunes of war but more powerful because you don't care about the points for uh, canceling an, uh, an ability and uh, you like which is very good but you can only do it once per round so that be careful about that and it means that the enemy needs to cripple your third uh, lexington your third dead president which means already going through like the 918 uh, already going through 24 hull points of something that is armor 7 with shield before you lose your devil's own luck. So it really means you will have this capacity for a lot of time. And uh, so you need to build this as a Lexington. But be careful, be careful, because there is an alternative build that is now there for the dead presidents. Um, this is kind of like something to keep in mind because with only one box, you will, uh, only with the independence box set, you will not be able to have the dead presidents. But if you buy just one extra box of Constitution or Mexico or anything, uh, you will very fast be able to build it and you need to if you need the three uh, ships so you need to think in advance if you want the direct president which version you want because because if you buy the pipework upgrades which I would recommend to do because you gain a lot then you lose the rear gun battery which means which means that the dead presidents don't have the appearance like the look of uh, Lexington anymore but they will look like Yorktowns with alternative weapons and stat lines, etc. But it means that if you want to build the basic dead presidents, they need to look like Lexingtons. If you want to build the upgraded pipework uh, dead presidents, they need to look like Yorktowns. And this is what I would do, which is why I hesitate always to recommend you to build Yorktowns or Lexingtons. Just a single ship, I would recommend Lexingtons all the time, yes. But if you want to build later on the dead presidents, it's fine to have three Lexingtons, but it's better to have three Yorktowns because then you can pay them this upgrade. And what does it do? This is like where it gets interesting. Uh, you pay 46 points for the whole unit. So it means the whole pack is, is way north of 500 points. It is, it is the most expensive cruiser squadron of the entire game. But as we've said, it is extremely tanky. It has shield, shadow hunter, veteran repair teams, armor 7, 6 whole points before it gets crippled. Like, wow. So it is very expensive. You lo uh, you gain hydrophone relay, whatever. You lose the gun battery, so you lose a lot. You're like, but what do I gain? Well, you get, what do you gain? You get heavy electro cannons instead of heavy gun batteries. That is huge because the heavy electro cannon is an incredible piece of weaponry. It is basically one of the best weapon of the entire Union faction. It is kind of like heavy gun batteries, except it is arc. It shoots extremely well even at long range. It shoots very well at every range, basically, and it shoots even better than the heavy gun batteries. It has, I think, a long range that has like 10.5 as a value of attack, and this is a long range. And the um, basic heavy gun battery gets 9.4 at the ideal specific closing range. So if you have three dead presidents with this upgrade, it means they're going to be very tanky, you're going to get div uh, devils on luck, and it means that they're just going to obliterate at least one ship every turn but if you need they just link with themselves like two um, heavy electro cannon by two heavy electro cannon that is still going to be critical left and right the dead presidents are the most expensive squadron in the game yes but they are probably the most powerful squadron in the game by far if you play them well and it's easy with shadow hunter and pack hunter and everything there is very little that they fear 
of course they will be a little bit more vulnerable to air attack so it's always good to attach them i don't know for example to california to repair them and to make some uh, defenses but really like this is such such an efficient ship that is tough with shield lots of hull good armor extremely good uh, firepower at all the ranges even at long range this is a very oppressive unit and uh, one of the main reasons that like, you might want to play the union because if you see the stat lines right here and you listen to me saying like yeah it's amazing you may be like oh it's interesting but if you see on the table what these guys do they win entire games by themselves they are absolute heroes especially with, with the pipe warp upgrades and uh, they're just so fun they're extremely expensive but if you want to play an elite army this is absolutely the way to go so much fun playing those guys Okay, now we go the other way of the spectrum with the Intrepid Light Cruiser. Uh, this guy is cheap. 88 points for a cruiser is cheap. Uh, yes, it has only one heavy gun battery to the front, but it has a small one to the rear. And since it's very easy to show your side with contra rotation, it means you can very fast <coughs> combo this at a closing range to gain an attack that will be 12 dices with Give Them Hell that is going to be most of the time a critical on if anything except a battleship for a single cruiser I'm talking still uh, and of course you can have the broadside and stuff and the interesting thing with this guy is that it has Vanguard which means that the Intrepid is very good to very fast go and capture objectives in the center of the map very early and then it can just uh, use its counter rotation or tactical cavitation or anything to just turn around and uh, be protected from uh, torpedoes and be very annoying for its point cost just show your side and use broadsides and both gun batteries to be a good ship like this is not the ship that is going to win your game by sheer attrition or anything but it is very good for the point cost and uh, it's very annoying to remove for your opponent and with vanguard it's very uh, useful for objective play and finally we go with the reliant monitor which is 88 points uh, this guy has is very interesting. First of all, you see that it has the same cost as the Intrepid, even though it loses a gun battery, so you're like, whoa, what the hell happens? It has Maritime Patrol, which boosts it for the, um, against a submerged unit, okay, fine. Uh, and it has two main upgrades. Uh, it also has Shallow Drop, which means that if you use a lot of uh, shallow terrain, uh, shallow water, it these can navigate more conveniently but whatever it's really not why you buy it you buy it because it has heavy broadside and this means that this little guy first of all it's easy to pilot and when you get at point blank range and you should go there quite easily because either you hide well behind islands or because you're not a target priority then this guy gets at point blank range and let me tell you that heavy broadsides on the one or two reliant with give them hell really doesn't make anybody laugh because then you're gonna reroll all the blues and every explosive is going to be devastating so three hits like this thing can really put a lot of damage on a, even a battleship too reliant at point blank range even if it's a good battleship should the every broadside at point blank range would give them hell and this should make easily a critical damage on any ship in the game which is quite a lot plus if you get at the good range and you start to show your sides and stuff uh, you have another torpedo salvo of course you have one in the front but you also have the second one to the rear hard to point to use except if for example i don't know your enemy uses some uh, robots to come in your back line but even then since you have such a good mobility you can really go close to the enemy and then pivot show your flank to the enemy which if you are in the middle of the map should mean that you have of course your enemy uh, for your broadside but in front of you you might have enemy ships and in behind you you will have other enemy ships which means that you can then maximize your firepower and this is really how i would play the monitor hide behind islands go really in the center use your heavy broadside of course you use your heavy gun batteries uh, left and right you can even if you want replace the heavy gun batteries with shield to really make it like a kind of like boarding heavy broadside beast uh, would not recommend it because uh, then it's really easy to see what you want to do with this ship and to um, try to get away from it uh, heavy gun batteries are really good for the union as well as always so maybe keep it and uh, yeah that's how i would play it and make sure you, you can maximize the use of all your torpedo salvos all right, we switch to a new sprue, and this is going to be the Gettysburg Heavy Monitor. So this guy is on the Earl War Veteran uh, Squadron uh, sprue, and as you can see, it is quite expensive at uh, 119 points. And then you might be like, okay, what does it do, this little guy? 
Uh, first of all, if it has full steam ahead, which means it is surprisingly fast if it goes in a straight line. Uh, it has, uh, as you can see, a heavy gun batteries and that's it. And then two small gun batteries. So you might be like, ah, oh, that's a bit sad. Uh, and it is a little bit sad, but it means that if you show your side and you can use with a gun battery to the rear, uh, you have more firepower, like quite a lot more. It's gonna be nine plus three plus three which is uh, quite a lot, 15. Well, if you only have two heavy gun batteries, it's gonna be nine plus four, so only 13. So again, plus two, if you are at the good uh, side. It has one extra hull point compared to a Yorktron, for example, which is really good, uh, especially for sh ships that want to be cheap. And it has heavy broadside. And as we've just talked uh, about with the monitor, you know that heavy broadsides are really, really good. Uh, if you start to get at the good range and you have you uh, declare give them hell on your heavy gun batteries, all the gun batteries and the heavy broadsides are going to benefit, that is going to be a lot for your opponent to deal with. It is fast enough, especially with the full steam ahead, to get into the good uh, range very fast. It has shallow draw as well. Minesweeper is something that is overlooked, but it can actually be very useful. Having at least one ship with Minesweeper in your fleet can be really helpful. And finally, it has reliable design, which means that it repairs a lot better than other ships, uh, which is actually something that you want for a ship like this, uh, because you are going to use a lot of give them hell, and you want your reparation for criticals or even disorder or whatever to uh, happen as often as you can. Another ship that you can build, and I really want to love this ship, but unfortunately it's still too pricey for now, is the Saratoga Literal Cruiser. So this thing can bombard uh, units on the ground uh, very efficiently, which you would care about if there were any type of units on the ground that you could have right now. But for now, the rule exists, so you know that later on it might be useful. It has a uh, forward-facing heavy gun battery and small gun battery. Okay, good, good. And it has specifier assault, also very good. Uh, but compared to the Gettysburg, it does lose a point of hull in a battle ready, which is sad. It loses the rear uh, gun battery, also sad. And it retrogrades to uh, normal broadside, also very sad. All of this for coastal bombardment, which is uh, which you cannot even use. And for the pacifier assault, which is fine, which is fun. But is it worth... Uh, paying more and losing everything else that you would get. Uh, full steam ahead and the extra gun battery and the heavy broadside. Uh, my answer is for sure no. Uh, the ship is for now uh, overcoasted. Luckily you can of course build it if you want it uh, as it is right now and proxy it either as a Gettysburg, either as a Sumter that we'll see later. Or you can, like it's very easy to magnetize like everything. You can just replace the little air pad in the rear with a gun battery and it's gonna be fine. So for now, the Saratoga, unfortunately, uh, is uh, very uh, underwhelming. But since, anyway, it's made for a game mode that doesn't exist yet, uh, it's fine. You can absolutely build it right now and proxy it or magnetize it. Or you can play it. It's not, it's not too bad. Like, it's fine, but it's a little bit overcoasted. And if you play at a tournament, don't play it. If you play it at a, fine, like a Sunday game with your friends, it's absolutely fine. 123 points for what it does is good. If you want to play it, try to play it hidden. So you can use your pacifier assault quite well. Uh, and just poke out of an island uh, to benefit from being obscured. And uh, just shoot with your forward-facing gun, gun battery. Because you have nothing pointing to the rear. And that's how we will play it uh, for now. And now we we what everything we said about uh, the Saratoga that it was too expensive. Let's put it the other way around because if you just trade your forward gun bat heavy gun battery, sorry, for um, this which is a landing vessel rule, uh, then you get the Sumter. And is it worth it? Absolutely, because it's almost if I'm not mistaken, almost 50 points cheaper. And you just lose one heavy gun battery, basically. If I, and you gain landing vessel, which you cannot use still. But it means that you have only a small gun battery. Eh? It's a little bit underwhelming. But then this ship does one thing and it wants it knows what it wants to do. It wants to have this uh, little uh, pacifier assault all day long. So you can really just use it as a pacifier platform. Hide it behind an island. And being like a close range, like... A very close range uh, aircraft carrier in a way. Uh, you can replace if you want the gun battery with a Chesapeake Gatling gun. You're still going to be quite cheap and it means that if you hide behind an island and an enemy gets too close uh, you can just pop out 
use your Chesapeake Gatling gun, uh, use uh, your broadside at the same time because you of course gonna declare give them hell and a squadron of even just two Sumters with Gatlings at point blank is just going to do a ton of damage on anything. Uh, plus, for the point cost, even at 84 points, they are quite resilient for their points. Like, uh, they are still Armor 6, a little 12, uh, 4 holes in Battle Ready and 4 in Crippled. It is as resilient as any uh, cruiser in the game. And uh, for the point cost, especially again, if you buy the Chesapeake Gatling Gun, uh, then you have a ship that wants to be a carrier, an aircraft carrier in a way, but if the enemy gets close, it really, really has something to talk uh, with uh, your opponent and to make them think twice before they get too close. Then we get the Providence Merchantman. Uh, this guy is stupidly cheap. It has a cruiser profile for 57 points and it has two gun batteries. I don't know how that can happen, but it, it means that this thing, each of them is going to make eight dices of gun batteries with devastating, of course and uh, broadside also devastating and it has useful fright which is fine it has a lot of rules reliable design it can be attached as well which why not why not uh, this ship is amazing it's amazing if you just if you know you're only going to get one sprue of the Aurora veterans uh, for sure but build the providence this ship is too good you will always want to attach it to your flagships if you don't attach uh, for example a california or some um, springfield corvettes yeah the union is spoiled for choice about uh, attaching uh, attaching some ships to their flagship but yeah even just on its own the providence is so good it gives you so much for 57 points it's a very cheap and tough activation with two gun batteries and broadsides which would be underwhelming like which would be fine sometimes but with give them l it's so much and if you can attach it for i don't know for example a constitution uh, then it can be plus six dice with the gun batteries and you can link the broadside as well and give a bonus to defense and use it like i don't know to throw the providence in the way of an incoming ramming ship or whatever all of this plus useful fright for only 57 point that is a steal absolutely build the providence if you're only gonna build one ship of the Orwa veteran squadron for now and of course still always better to magnetize and now we go to the support sprues of the Union. And we'll start with the aircraft carrier, which is the Roanoke support carrier. Uh, first of all, the thing that you will see that is interesting with this carrier is that it can be attached to any Union ship. And this means that if you want to make a little wombo combo, you can absolutely attach a Roanoke to a unit of Washington missile cruisers or any unit that have a spotter. And then in a single activation, you can send your SRS that will then spot the enemy and in the same activation shoot with your unit, for example your Washingtons, that have the spotter rule. So this is a combo that is very, very efficient, uh, very pricey as well, and the Washingtons, as we'll see, have been a little bit nerfed. But for 125 points, the Roanoke is a fine uh, carrier, especially because of this little combo. Also, it has a rocket battery, which, if taken in the right unit with Washingtons and everything, and an A-crown, can be extreme range. Uh, other than that, it has a tactical cavitation, which can mitigate a little bit one of the things that the carriers hate, which is torpedoes. And if you buy three Roanokes, which starts to be a huge investment, you can upgrade them and pay plus uh, f five points per model. Um, and actually, wait a second. Oh my god, this rule has been changed. My bad. A single uh, unit may be upgraded for, for plus five points per model, but then it means you don't, it used to be that you needed three uh, Roanoke to get the white doves. And now it's very different. Okay, my bad. And because this is very different now, because you only pay five points per model. So let's say you buy one, one uh, Roanoke. You give them the white dove up, uh, upgrade. You hide them, of course. And for 130 points, you send four SRS token. And if for an attack run, uh, you have more white doves SRS token than other, um, if you have one or more SRS token, uh, and they are the majority of the tokens, then you gain arc and sustained instead of uh, piercing. Uh, which is a little bit uh, sad to lose piercing, but arc and sustain can really be good, uh, especially sustain. Like if you start to reroll blanks and reroll re one of the two blues, uh, that starts to be very, very reliable. Plus you have arc, so you're gonna start to bring a disorder as well. Um, I just noticed this. I'm not sure it means the Roanoke is a crazy good uh, ship uh, all of a sudden. 
um, but it means that if you buy it, it really allows you to uh, specialize your Roanoke and to combo very, very well with other aircraft carriers, the Liberty that we've talked about, the Enterprise, etc., etc. And it can really be a fun little combo that is available now. But still, you buy the Roanoke if you buy it, mostly for the combo where you attach it and you trigger a spotter for your entire unit. Okay, now a unit that I really really like uh, the discovery arc cruiser it was already quite good uh, for me like i felt and uh, some people felt it was underpowered so it got some price reduction and the electric cannon was boosted uh, which means that it is now an extremely good ship uh, it's very very much a glass cannon yes it is very fast with its arc generator it's going to move basically 11 uh, which is very good it does have temperamental design, so be careful. Like it is very fragile, if we're gonna say in the end. For the point, because it's fragile, plus it has temperamental design, so it's really gonna die at some point, very fast. But if it gets at point blank, you can just declare, give them hell, use your act generator as a weapon for an extra damage, and you're gonna get two disorder tokens on each of your ship for your own activation. But then you're gonna do so much damage. The I've told already how good the heavy electro cannon battery is. Uh, you probably want to make a whole squadron of discoveries if you can, but even just one is still very good. And uh, this is the ship that your opponent, if he plays once against it, it will be focused down. The discovery is a huge threat, especially at point blank, and uh, your opponent will not let it be. But uh, if you do manage to hide well, or you have other targets, uh, in the side, or you, you if, I don't know, you use your enterprise as cover. I don't know. If you do manage to get into your good range, which is point blank range, then this thing is just such a damage dealer. But it is a glass cannon, so be very careful about it. Uh, as you may have seen in our battle report, where we it's called breaching the blockade if you want to have a look at it it's a very fun unit to build i had a pack of three of those already a little bit damaged charging in the middle of the enemy formation shooting everything left and right and just obliterating the enemy ship but they got so much disorder that even one of my ships sink itself while shooting all its electric cannons it was a lot of fun and then it exploded like it so much fun have a look at the battle report if you didn't see it and remember that the discoveries have been boosted since this battle report so now I highly recommend it. A single one could be fun, could be fun. But if you start to have two or three of them, uh, this is uh, where the fun begins, as General Skywalker said. And the Montgomery. As we've said, the Union is spoiled for choice about something that you can attach to a flagship. Uh, this guy is very interesting, interesting for two ways. First of all, it has advanced repair facility too, which is always very good. And especially it can, um, it can um, repair uh, aircrafts around so it can repair acrons it can repair the new uh, bogota carrier uh, not carrier bogota aircraft uh, that uh, has been released now with the new uh, fortunes and glory uh, starter set and it can especially repair the automatas which are quite fragile but when you have a montgomery around they all of a sudden become much harder to destroy there it's also a mine layer which is something that we'll never say no to and for 70 points it's just very good you cannot go wrong by building a Montgomery. It is, of course, more efficient if you go uh, aerial units heavy for the Union. But just between the Advanced Repair Facility 2 and Mine Layer, and being able to be attached, it's already a good ship. If you can use the Field Repair Platform, even better. But otherwise, it's a good, cheap, tough activation. And now we go to one of my favorites, the California. It has almost no weapon like it has broadsides okay fine it, be careful we as you've seen we already had a california on a battle report sinking i think it was magenta uh, cruise battle cruiser for the alliance with its broadside with give them hell and a crazy dice roll so don't underestimate even a single broadside especially when you can give them hell and the california is so good 59 points no weapons almost as we said but what does it do first of all it has heavy escort so plus two uh, to the defense roll of anything around. So if you attach it, it's plus three to the defense rolls. As we've talked about, it can be really, really efficient for, I don't know, something even like an America special vessel, for example, or basically anything, a Liberty carrier, anything. Everybody loves this little guy. It also has logistical support, which is one of the roles that I love because more cards is all like it always boosts you. Like you always end up the turn 
having almost no cards in your hand because either you play them for victory either you use them for like special effects or you use them for fortunes of war like more cards is always uh, very important and it also has minesweeper and supply depot which means that you can um, give back disorder which we know the union doesn't like and if you attach it to a carrier for example a liberty or an enterprise this is the combo made in heaven because uh, you will uh, make sure that your very expensive enterprise even if it gets a lot of disorder token can still send some SRS uh, tokens around so all in all an amazing ship if you can buy only one ship from the entire support sprue I would probably recommend you a California because you can never go wrong with a California in your fleet and the last option that you can build is the Washington missile cruiser uh, it's became a little bit more expensive uh, and now the cruise missile silo especially is much worse than it used to be uh, unfortunately it is still a very good uh, artillery ship but you really need to make the whole combo to make it worth your while so you need three Washington missile cruisers maybe with an attached um, a Roanoke so you can uh, trigger the spotter which uh, it has and an AWACS of course uh, because uh, then uh, you can get extreme range on your rocket batteries which you will get four of if uh, you uh, attach a Roanoke and it's really what you want because the AREX rule is hard to use because your enemy can focus your aerial units that are very fragile but if you use spotter to gain high velocity uh, then for sure it's gonna help you a lot you're gonna reroll blanks on your big missiles you're gonna have high velocity which you really need and then you're just gonna blast away and uh, with a little Roanoke around like it's really gonna be good you can also, if you do that, have um, what is the name? The little California that we've talked about, which is very good for supply depot because the uh, cruise missile silos are unfortunately limited weapons. So it's still a very fun, very cool ship, but you need at least uh, four uh, ships to make it work, even five, because uh, you want the three Washingtons, you want the California, and you want the Roanoke, which is a lot of points, but then you have a blast template to obliterate anything anywhere. Uh, but it means that you need the independence and then you need four more sprues of support ships if you want to make the whole combo which means at least two more boxes and yeah that is very expensive so if you have only one ship to build for the independence battlefleet set i would not recommend the washington unfortunately and now we go back to the basic ships and especially the mass one ships we will start with the Springfield Corvette which you have only two of on this uh, sprue on this box and this is why now you can play them in units of two which is a lot of flexibility actually uh, the whole of Union benefits from this uh, the Springfield Corvettes have one role and one role only it's Corvette duty you attach them to something to a Union flagship and uh, then it gives them a big boost in defense because of course plus one from being attached and then you gain plus one for each Springfield Corvette that is around. That is a lot of defense extra, of course. Uh, you can have up to four Springfield Corvettes. Uh, so that's already plus five to your ADV and SDV. Very good. Of course, it boosts a lot because you're gonna, if you get everybody in range, it's going to be plus eight to a boarding action. Also very good, especially because Give Them Hell also boosts your boarding actions, actually. And uh, yeah, it's just really good. More broadside is good, and especially four more gun batteries means uh, to the good range, plus 12 dices, devastating. That is huge. That is huge for 100 points, 12 dices extra and devastating. That is usually the difference between couple damage, maybe a critical, and just double citadel and obliterating something. So if you don't know what to attach on your uh, battleship or battle cruiser or something that is going to uh, go close to the enemy, uh, for Springfield Corvettes is always a good choice except for the Mexico because the Mexico cannot link uh, its electric uh, cannons with the basic gun batteries but yeah I absolutely love the Springfields uh, not a huge fan of the design but whatever because uh, they are so good that uh, they are automatically always there for me in all of my list be careful they're extremely fragile basically 10 hits uh, and they're dead and they have because they have citadel 10 armor 5 two hull points they're extremely fragile so if your enemy has blast remember to spread out just enough to keep uh, in the corvette duty range but uh, and take advantage of the fact that for the union the coherency range etc etc is five inches and not four And uh, one last thing that I forgot to say is that you can actually make for the Springfield Corvettes um, 
pack of eight of them. I'm not sure this is how I would use them because then, uh, yes, they have a lot of defenses and they're hard to deal with, but you don't combo them so good with uh, flagships. But if you all your flagships already have, I don't know, uh, they already have a Roanoke and a California, etc., etc., and you have a lot of Springfields, you can absolutely make a pack of eight of them. Uh, they are very sensitive to blast, but if your enemy doesn't have blast or you spread out, they are such a nightmare because it's 25 points per model. Your enemy will really have trouble uh, dealing with them because he needs to put exactly the right amount of firepower. A single heavy gun battery at the good range statistically does not kill them because they will be obscured against gunnery because they're mass one. And uh, they're just going to be basically immune, a pack of eight of them, against, I don't know, against rockets, against torpedoes, against aircrafts, because all of them together, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be... <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to be something like 20 ADV because eight of them... They each of them give plus two because they are part of the same squadron. Plus plus one from uh, Corvette duty. Yeah, it's gonna be something like plus uh, plus fourteen and then three. Yeah, something it's gonna be like eighteen ADV. Like, pff, and same of SDV. If you put technical cavitation, they're absolutely immune to torpedo fire. So if your enemy doesn't have a blast, a pack of eight Springfields can absolutely do the joke. And talking about making a joke with a big pack of uh, ships, you can have the Farragut frigates, which can be in pack squadrons of eight as well. And those, it's even more insane. They don't have the same immunity because they don't have corvette duty, so they don't mind being spread out a lot. So even if your enemy has a lot of blast, it doesn't matter as much because you can really spread them out with flash lamps and the five inches coherency. And then those guys. All of them have gun batteries, of course, like the others. They are more expensive. They're 33 points per model. But the extra thing they get, they get light broadside still. You know? The extra thing they get is they also get torpedoes and linear dash, but whatever. Which means that a squadron of eight of them is expensive, yes. But they can just spread out around, making a little big line, uh, battle line. And then it's going to be eight gun batteries linking together with give them hell, of course. If you can put some broadside because they're very agile, it's even better. They have three hull points, so they're tougher. Citadel 11, so you do need quite some firepower to uh, sink them down. With torpedoes, it might work well, but with gun batteries, it's going to be hard. And uh, you can link all the eight torpedoes together, and that's going to be uh, another source of damage, like a big source of damage. If you've seen them on uh, some of our battle reports, especially the one against the Commonwealth, uh, you've seen that these guys can just obliterate left and right, like a uh, little Colossi here on the right, the little Mojaiski uh, fleet carrier there in the back. They can just put so much firepower for their size, uh, it's actually quite scary. And if you really want to go all in, uh, I would recommend a big pack of Defiant Destroyers. Of course, you only get one in this box, which is a little bit sad, but it's already for 35 points, uh, already something quite uh, interesting. Do note that the Defiant Destroyer, you need a pack of two of them. What you will be able to build in the box uh, legally is the Valiant Fast Destroyer, which we'll talk about right after. But my recommendation, if you know you like Union and you will get more of the Union Destroyers later, is to build them as Defiant because they are so much better. They're, first of all, they are, have gun batteries front and back, which is already something you know the Union loves with Give Them Hell. And uh, they have light broadside, whatever. They are 35 points per model, so a little bit more than the Faragots. They lose, of course, the um, uh, torpedoes, unfortunately. But, but, but. Uh, they are have the same defensive profile, but they also have focused gunnery. And that starts to be insane. Because uh, having uh, give them hell and having devastating weapons, you usually love when you have rerolls because it allows you to trigger more often the give them hell and the devastating. And this means with this focus gunnery that you can have this big pack of, for example, at some point you will have five of them. So yes, it's going to be expensive, but then those guys are going to be mass one. So quite fast, quite agile. You can get them in the right range and then they're just going to obliterate something. Uh, it's going to be five, like it's going to be 10 uh, gun batteries. So a ton of dices with focus gunnery. So we're rolling blanks, plus two dices, and give them health, so devastating. This, these guys, five of them, they can hunt anything. They can hunt a super battleship if they want. They can go and look at a Akita a super battleship and be like, you know what, I want you to die. And it will die. Okay, not immediately, but it's just such a terrifying unit. Yes, they are fragile. They're, yes, they are glass cannons. But 
10 gun batteries at closing range with give them hell with focus gunneries let me tell you nobody's jokes at that and uh, yeah i just love this unit so so much I will very much enjoy playing this. Uh, it is quite fragile, so be, really be careful with this. It doesn't have torpedoes, so you can really afford to just hide behind islands uh, until you are very close to your opponent. And if you get even at point blank range, uh, fine, you have light broadside. Use also trigger, give them hell, and use it. But really, your main weapons are your gun batteries. You are very agile with your contra rotation, so you can very easily use all of them. And since it is such an overkill unit with all the gun batteries you can absolutely do like five gun batteries on one target five gun batteries on another boost only the most important one with a focus gunnery if you know you're gonna shooting at, i don't know if you're shooting at mass two cruisers for example uh, if you're shooting at one big unit of course if it's mass three or plus of course link everything together but i love the defined so so much uh, it's probably one of my favorite destroyers of the game quite cheap and uh, it does exactly what the Union likes to do, and Focus Gunnery is such a godsend here. And then you get the Valiant, which is basically the same, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't have a picture yet. And it's basically the same, but you replace the gun batteries with rocket batteries. It keeps its torpedo uh, launcher, which is uh, good, from, so it means it has two small weapons, plus broadside, plus the torpedoes, fine, but <sighs> I'm not a big fan of it. It be, mostly because the rocket batteries are terrible rapid right now. They are 5.2 as an offensive profile, which is a world apart from 5.3 from the gun batteries. Yes, they can shoot at long range, but remember that you shoot against the enemy's ADV. You have Skyfire, so they have a role as anti-air unit, but at 40 points per model, <laughs> they're not worth it. They're not worth it. They are a little bit awkward. They have some weak broadside. They have some torpedoes, but they also want to be just hidden and shooting at uh, aerial units and uh, their torpedoes are forward facing but their rocket battery in the rear is uh, facing only the in the back uh, it's a bit weird they have hydrophone relay it's uh, linear dash whatever skyfire is okay but they're fine anti-air unit but nothing crazy like at all if you want a good anti-air unit there are others in the union especially for example uh, if you start to have a look at the aerial units of the union actually but really the Valiant is very underwhelming right now. I don't know what it should do to get better. I think it will take the rocket batteries getting better for the Valiant to be interesting, or the Valiant getting a big point reduction, uh, or like getting some extra funky rolls. But right now, I don't see myself having a Valiant instead of a Defiant. Then we get a very interesting uh, unit, which is the Cheyenne. Uh, you can buy only one of them, or you can make a pack of up to five. Okay. If you make a unit of a Cheyenne, you can uh, have a unit of a single Valiant Destroyer. Uh, this allows you to play with the box as it is. And um, yeah, it's a little trick with the roll just because otherwise it, you would not be able to play either the Valiant or the, the Defiant. Um, what happens, it has a very interesting role, which is triangulated solution. Which means basically if a Valiant is close to your... Um, enemy that you are shooting at you get a huge boost with your torpedo salvos uh, like actually significant um, that makes it worth it uh, do note that the constitution gained this rule now triangulated solution so having a valiant just for this purpose is fun is thematic it can be good uh, but I'm not sure it is uh, It is such worth It's a very good rule. If you only buy this Independence Battlefleet set, then it's worth it to try this little funky combo. But it's a lot of rules to remember for a benefit that is there. It is a good boost to your Torpedo Salvos. But it's a lot of rules for not that a crazy amount. Like, yes, it is a fun combo. It is efficient. Yes. But do you really want to get this? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, apart from this funky combo with the Valiant, uh, the Shein is actually a fine ship. 40 points for a ship that is very thin, as you can see, so very easy to hide. You can absolutely have them, like all of them together. A uh, pack of five, you get five of them eventually. You can hide them easily. Uh, they have tactical cavitation, so the thing that might make them scared, uh, which is torpedoes, they can get some boost against it. So there is a big chance they win torpedo uh, exchange with enemies uh, long-range, extreme-range submarines, uh, thanks to that. And they have Silent Hunter, 
which uh, also gives them a big boost to their deployability. I'm sure it's a real world. But yeah, they, they're much easier to deploy thanks to that. So you can really put them where they need to be and make a big turn one uh, salvo. So I really, actually for 40 points, I really like it. Uh, yes, it has only four armor, but it is a submarine, so it's always going to be submerged. Not only against... Uh, not only against gun batteries is it going to be considered obscured, it's always going to be obscured. You can really put it where it needs to be, uh, hidden. Uh, it's quite a small unit and uh, it's just going to send some torpedo salvos all game long. And it will require quite some firepower from your opponent to deal with. And remember to always activate your tactical cavitation because the one thing that this guy fears is torpedoes and if you get obscured also against torpedoes, let me tell you that for 40 points those guys are going to be annoying to deal with. We continue now with the Akron Observation Rotor. Okay, I have few things to say. This little ship has changed a lot over the versions of the game. I just love the design. It, just for me, it's one of the best design of the game. It is steampunk and a little bit futuristic and a little bit uh, dwarven, like dwarven-like, and just love it. You can play it in a few different ways. First of all, it is uh, can be used, this model, as an Akron Escort uh, token, which is basically an escort token, aerial, so hard to destroy, and it gives extreme range. That is the main way to use them. If you have only two of them, for example, if you buy only this uh, set, absolutely use them only as escort tokens to get uh, extreme range and to also have escort tokens because escort tokens are good. So that's how I would do. If you start to have a lot of acrons, there is another way to play them that I really love. It's basically a big pack of doom form up to uh, from four acrons up to eight 22 points per model so extremely cheap they do have only four armor and two holes so if your enemy gets like eight hits is down but it has a lot of rules it has shadow hunter which is very good because uh, it really doesn't want to be facing enemies that can hunt him so being able to redeploy is very good vanguard it has AWAX, which means that any enemy within 20 inches you get uh, basically a, uh, extreme range on your rockets, fine. And homing, oh, it starts to be very interesting. So you do want this guy to be close to the opponent. It has sky fire, so it can start to hunt enemy hostile if you start to get a ton of rocket pods. It has the same spirit torpedo launchers as the Fargus, for example, or the Valiant. So if you start, again, to have eight of them, it starts to be a lot. And it also has a very funky rule, which is if you have only one uh, Akron left in your entire unit, the unit is destroyed and you get an Akron, uh, Akron Escort token anywhere you want uh, for free, kind of, let's say for free. So it's quite good. Like, I really like this little guy. It's between the Shadow Hunter and Vanguard, you can really put it where you want. Uh, Skyfire means it can be used to clean some terrain. Hydro, like AWACS is good. Hydrofan really is also like it combos well because both will trigger at the same time. And it's very agile and it has a surprising amount of firepower for 22 points between the rocket and the torpedo launcher. Uh, if you have only four of them, it's quite underwhelming, but a pack of eight of them, it's very annoying to deal with. If you if your opponent has blast, of course, spread out. But uh, 22 points for something that is aerial, so immune to torpedoes, and will be annoying to have just the right amount of firepower, it's quite good. Uh, remember, it's aerial, so until you are at point blank range, your enemies, uh, gun batteries, heavy gun batteries, are going to have a very hard time to deal with you because you're going to always be considered at long range until the very last moment, which means even heavy gun batteries are going to be 6-3 against you. And let me tell you, 6-3, uh, it's going to be 9. If they, um, if you are going to be obscured because it's going to be weapons and you are mass 1, is not even sure with two heavy gun batteries to shoot down your ship that costs 22 points. So. Let me tell you, the acrons are very annoying to deal with. Except if you have, for example, Washington missiles. Uh, but then, yeah, Washington missiles and all these blast templates are, that are aerial are very good against them. So again, if your enemy has blast, spread out. Ah, and then the Patriot Automatas. Those guys, those guys. Uh, they're very cool ships. They have two variants of weapons, very different roles. And let's talk about them. <clears throat> First of all, you can attach them to a Pipeworks unit, which is basically any unit uh, that is from this uh, Tesla uh, experimental ship. You can attach them to a Mexico battleship. You can attach them to the dead presidents. There are a few things. I wouldn't recommend to do that ever because they are very fast and they want to 
do their own thing. They don't want to be there for fire support and combining their weapons. No, no, no. What they want is to be very fast flankers and damage dealers. Uh, those guys are glass cannons very much. They're 38 points and they're very fragile. Two whole points, five armor, ouch. Uh, they're basically what we said about the um, Akron, where we said like, yeah, they're, they're basically almost as tough as Akrons, but they cost almost the double. So as you can see, tough for them. Uh, what they want to do, they're very fast uh, and they can have low level strike. This is important. Low level strike means that they can, for one turn, they can deploy like this, or they can just activate with this roll when they activate. They can become scheming unit, which means few things. It means that they will um, be uh, hidden behind islands. Very, very important. But it means they will uh, be vulnerable to things like torpedoes, and it gives them plus one armor. So they will go to armor 6, starts to be fine, because then you have Citadel 11, your enemy will start to have trouble shooting you down. Still, you're expensive, so don't get crazy. What I, how I would play them is a pack of as many as you can. Two is fine, but you should have at least four of them. Six, of course, is amazing. You deploy them with low-level strike active. And this means that you will be considered a skimming unit during deployment. So you don't have to deploy first as all the aerial units. You can deploy at the same time as all the surface units. Very important. Uh, it means that during the first turn, until you activate, and until the second turn actually, until your second activation, uh, you are going to be considered as a skimming unit. Which means you will be able to hide behind islands. Very important. Deploy yourself hidden so your enemy cannot shoot you. And if you can, because you have short range, try to finish uh, your first uh, turn activation hidden still behind another island, but closer to your opponent. If you can't have options to do that efficiently, then consider putting them into reserve, because they are very fragile otherwise. Uh, and the good thing is that once you get at point-blank range, boy, do they bring the pain. They have two weapons, uh, either the dual naval electro cannon or the dual magnetic gatling guns. Basically, if you build them uh, if you buy them inside a uh, Pipeworks Battlefield, which you should, then uh, give them the Naval Electro Cannons, very good, uh, very efficient, and it triggers Sharpshooter. So those are good guns, very good guns, and you get minus two Citadel on your opponent. Incredible, incredible, and they will get sustained because they will be in the Pipeworks Battlefield. If you don't get them in the Pipeworks Battlefield, then I would highly recommend to give them the Magnetic Gatling Guns, better guns especially if you are not in the pipeworks and uh, because then you wouldn't get sustained anyway you do not trigger sharpshooter so you don't get minus two citadel so you are less reliably uh, aiming for the enemy's citadel but you are very good at i don't know at shooting down enemy mass ones with the gatlings you will not suffer from the gunnery penalty at shooting at mass ones and yeah either you play them as a basic gatling union ships then they are mass one hunters and they will clean the map. Uh, everything we said in this uh, video or in others when we say like, yeah, mass ones, they are annoying to deal with uh, patriots with their gatlings can reliably, relatively reliably destroy a mass one, each of them, each activation at point blank range. So yeah, that's a lot. Or you build them with dual level electric cannons if you have a pipe work battle fleet and then they become very good mass two or mass three hunters with their good weapons that have sharpshooter and sustained. And you get an extra little rocket pod, don't forget it. Sometimes I do forget that they have rocket pods because I don't know where it is on the model, but you do get it, so do use it. Uh, overall, a very good unit, but they are not here to be holding the center of the table. They are here to be very big threat on the flank. Hide them until the last moment as you can because those guys absolutely want to be at point blank. And the last unit that you get, ooh, it's starting to be a long video, last unit that you get uh, in this box is going to be the John Henry Vitruvian Colossus. So this guy, this, this guy is interesting. I didn't build mine yet, but I expect to see them soon. They have two options, either the small hammers, the twin sturgeon of hammers, or the grand jack hammer, which is the big two-handed one. I think I will build mine with the big two-handed hammer because, to be honest, statistically, I could describe you both, but I played the statistics, they are basically the same. Uh, <clears throat> you could say, okay, again, this specific enemy, they are maybe, I don't know, marginally better, but basically what I want to say is they're very similar. Build the hammers that you want. 
the very important thing to think about this guy because it's very easy to look at this and be like okay it's like a patriot automata but bigger yes but no this guy is not an aerial unit it is a skimming unit so everything we said about uh, low level strike apply it here it is armor 6 it will not go higher it will need absolutely to hide uh, behind islands because this guy is almost 140 points and it is fragile as it's very fragile it's uh, only five whole points it gets crippled very fast and it will get killed very fast it has a shield generator good for him but it's not gonna save him any anyway if any kind of dedicated firepower goes his way and it will because it's very fragile very threatening and very expensive it will go down a shield generator or not so hide it until the very last moment because this guy wants to be at point blank it wants to be pointed at the enemy and then it can use its rg afterburner uh, thing then it gets uh, a speed uh, 18 plus 2 basically speed 21 and it becomes obscured which it really wants even though then rule has written it means you cannot use your shield generator anymore a bit sad eh. uh, but and you get a disorder generation and you cannot use the hammer song which we'll talk and you cannot shoot and cannot board eh. but <laughs> then it means you can use your ramming action which is what you want to do with this guy very efficiently if uh, using this afterburner means you can get behind the enemy fleet uh, and potentially hit hidden behind the enemy fleet and going after the enemy carriers, then do it. Otherwise, uh, use it as a Patriot Automata, but the one that wants to do a ramming. Uh, the Hammer Song, it's uh, basically a very expensive uh, valor effect that you can use. You need to spend a card that has a value of at least 40, which is huge. And it only works, uh, no, actually it works for both now. And if you did at least one point of damage with your ramming action, which let's be honest, you always will, you actually will deal a lot more than that, uh, then you can make a second ramming action on the same target or another one within two inches of the first point. This is insane because this means that uh, if uh, you use the hammer song, you will obliterate anything. You can destroy two boats with that and it's crazy. Uh, again i want to remind you that if you use the rg afterburner you will not be able to use the hammer song so it's a huge uh, bet to use the afterburner but again if it means that because of the hammers of the after of the afterburner you get behind the enemy fleet and they don't shoot you as much because you are behind their defense line and you're hidden and now you are free to hunt their carriers and stuff it's worth it otherwise as i said hide behind an island find an enemy that wait for an enemy to get too close because this guy is fast and then go for the ramming action with your big hammer shoot with your two chesapeake gatling guns which are very efficient and then try to trigger the hammer song if you have uh, enough uh, valor card to trigger this and of course if you use your chesapeake gatling gun remember to trigger your give them hell because <clears throat> the gatling guns are not gunnery if i'm not mistaken but they are fusillade which means they are very reliable, and on top of that, uh, they will get devastating. And let me tell you, two Chesapeake Gatling guns with devastating, rerolling all the blues, <laughs> this guy is a monster. It's very much a glass hammer. It's maybe one of the glassiest cannon of the entire game, because the damage potential of this uh, John Henry is off the roof. If you can make two ramming action and shoot your Chesapeake with uh, give them hell, it's really going to be insane amount of uh, damage for 138 points. But also, it's the ship that can be destroyed extremely fast if it gets caught in the open. So really be careful. An extremely glassy cannon, but one that can really deal so much damage. And okay, we finally finished. Whew, I hope you're still with me uh, all the way there, because that uh, was a, basically an orbit review for the Union. And let's talk about how to expand from the Independence Battlefleet set. As we've seen there, you get a little bit of everything, but it is not good enough for you to have a full fleet. You will have a little bit of everything. So how to expand? My recommendation uh, really would be to start with the Union starter set. Uh, this gives you the Constitution, which is a very good frontline ship. Uh, it has some very good named variant, for example, the Texas, which is amazing and you can also play it as a Mexico if you can. Uh, you will have two extra frontline cruisers and two extra support cruisers, so you will have three in total, already good. 
more Fygod Frigates, more Patriot Automatis, we've seen how both of those were good, and you get uh, more Akron Observers, so you can actually start to play them as a unit, even though I would still recommend to use them as Escort Tokens, more SLS, and you also have lots of dices and cards and everything. For 72 euros, that's a really good deal. All the starter sets are really good deals. And do remember that uh, if you go through my hobby place, uh, you get minus 10%. And if you choose us in the cart, uh, it also helps the channel. So really a good way. And really, if you don't know what to buy, I would recommend the Union starter set. It's a very good uh, way to boost your Independence Battlefleet set. The other way, and this is like if you want to go all in on the Union, is the Enterprise Battlefleet set. Again, very expensive. It's the most expensive type of box they sell, uh, more than 100 euros. But if you buy it on my hobby place, it's going to be basically 90 euros. So really worth it on these big boxes. Again, so as always, it helps us. And it's a very good box. You have the Enterprise, which is this amazing mass 4 carrier with a good shield and with fortunes of war. Uh, SLS capacity of 10. It's tough. It's amazing. The Enterprise is really a good ship. And you get even more frontline cruiser, even more support cruiser. It's basically the same sprues as the frontline, uh, sorry, the Union starter set, but you get one more of each. One extra frontline sprue, one extra support sprue is great. And you get the Enterprise, which is just such a massive, chunky ship. It's a huge piece of resin, and it's uh, probably one of the best carrier in the entire game. Love it. And the last way to expand, if you don't want to spend as much, would be to buy the Columbia Battlefleet set. And this is a very good one. Uh, first of all, you get the Columbia, which is this very, very tough ship. You can either build it as the very good combat ship or as the pacifier uh, assault version, which is, I think it's a Virginia or shit, there is a version of it. Uh, one of the, I think the Virginia is the Alliance version and there is another one, but it's basically the same for the Union. Uh, I would recommend the Columbia itself. Uh, you put four uh, Springfield Corvettes attached, and then it's just such a tough ship. They're very hard to deal with. Armor 8, Citadel 17, with very good SDV and everything. Very, very good ship. And you get more of the Orwar cruisers, those that you can build as Gettysburgs and Saratogas or Sumters, especially Providence. Very good ship. And you get more Springfield Corvettes, which, as we've seen already, are really good ship. Uh, you will have six of them in total, so you can attach four of them to the Columbia and two of them to your America or Liberty or Independence, uh, you, you know which one. The one that will have them in the Independence Battlefleet set. And you get more Escort Tokens, the surface one, which I love. Uh, they look very good, very cute. And Escort Tokens are really good, especially for the Union. Because when you get at point blank and you have your super strong broadside with Give Them Hell, every little extra dice helps. And you get more Thailand Auto Gyros. So if you don't want to spend too much, uh, the Columbia is a very, very good ship. And plus, all those ships that you get there can be a good first step into the Alliance. And that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this very long video, which was basically an orbit review for the Union. Uh, again, the Independence Battlefleet set is a really good set. Uh, it's a good first step for the in the Union, but I don't think it's enough. You will have a lot of variety. Thanks to this video, I hope you know what are your options and how to build them. But uh, you will not be able to make basically any unit of more than one ship. So you will really need to expand with that. Again, Union Starter, amazing. Enterprise, super good, but expensive. But if you probably the best box. And the Columbia, of course, is really good. The Mexico is also a good, a good box. It's basically the Constitution uh, Battlefleet set, but uh, with a support sprues and more electric cannons, which you know that I love. So a lot of options there. The Independence itself is a very cool resin ship. And uh, yeah, I would highly recommend the Independence Battlefleet set if you want to dip into the Union, because you will be able to taste a little bit of everything. Maybe try to make one game with all of those, and then you will see what you like, what you don't like, and then you can buy uh, accordingly the boxes that you want. Thank you very much for having watched until the end. If you give us a little comment, first of all, uh, it makes me very happy. And it also gives you a chance to win either a Crown or an Alliance uh, Battlefleet uh, for our Winter Contest. You can also give us a thumbs, it always really helps. And uh, other than that, until the next video, take care of yourself and remember to keep spreading the love all around. Bye!